Grand Mere has three lakes, north, middle, and south. There were once five lakes. The other two lakes, however, were filled in by eutrophication. The lakes we have today are under threat of disappearing. South Lake is the most eutrophic, followed by Middle Lake, then North Lake. These lakes are beautiful, but not as beautiful as Lake Michigan. There are two miles of breathtaking beach on Lake Michigan. This beach can only be reached by foot by climbing the mountainous sand dunes. Grand Mere is a beautiful place for a picnic, taking a dog for a walk, or just relaxing by the beach. And right by Grand Mere, you've got those two, three beautiful lakes, maybe some more formed through wonderful geological systems. They are sort of the Mona Lisa of the natural world. As the glaciers in Lake Michigan melted, they carved out the land in Grand Mere, and it created a bay. This bay was then filled in by eutrophication, giving us the three lakes and the beautiful dunes we have today. Grand Mere is a very special place. In the 985 acres of land, there lies many unique microclimates of both plants and animals. An example of plants would be the prickly pear cactus, which resides in the park. This cactus would normally not grow around Michigan, yet it is found in Grand Mere. And as for animals, the Canadian warbler, which typically lives in the cold climates of Canada, can be seen visiting the park in southwest Michigan. This goes to show that Grand Mere is home to species of many different natures. Another amazing quality of Grand Mere is its different stages of ecological succession. Starting at the beach, which holds a limited amount of vegetation, and traveling through the fore dune and back dune, all stages of succession are represented along the way, from primary succession to the almost climax community of the forest. The Lakeshore Chamber of Commerce voted unanimously to rezone Grand Mere for industrial, commercial, residential purposes. Many people believe they had planned to develop Grand Mere since they constructed the highway in 1958 and made Exit 22, which provides quick access to the Grand Mere area. The rezoning idea was rejected when the popular vote was 905 to 683 against rezoning Grand Mere. If they had allowed the land to be rezoned, it would have destroyed the natural beauty of this historic site. The development they wanted would have turned North, Middle, and South Lakes into marinas. They would have built a resort and a golf course on the beach. The plan would have created commercial and industrial sites by the highway. The highway itself destroyed some of the dunes, and this plan would have destroyed them almost completely. If we would have done this, the area would have ended up looking like China, where there is little greenery and many overdeveloped areas. Polluted, it's they either farm or industrialize uh, everything right up to the highways. They get grow cabbage in the in the uh, uh, in the highways of the highways. Uh, they, and when you get towards big cities, they have interstates now. Uh, but when we approached big cities and the interstates were there, there were people all over the place in the green shoulders. Uh, and uh, we said, what is this, some kind of a, of a, is this a rebellion or what? I said, no, it's the weekend. And this is the only place people can find uh, green areas is on the interstate byways. You know, the shoulders and the, the you know, now think of what a sad existence yet if you wanted to have a picnic someplace and the only place you could find that was green and, and there was a breeze and the breeze was caused by trucks coming by. The only place you could find that is on the interstate of 94. Businessmen wanted to develop this area and cut away a beautiful part of nature. The people knew they had to stop these businessmen from doing this. It was the environmental crisis and here was the dunes under threat of being developed uh, by, uh, by Mr. Businessman. Uh, and it was just that time of year, or that time in our history, where people were getting fed up with Mr. Businessman, uh, who had uh, theoretically uh, done business, but had in reality uh, wrecked pretty much of our uh, ecosystem. Businessmen from the sand mining company wanted to destroy the dunes and use the sand for molds for car parts. People became fed up with these businessmen destroying this wonder of nature and decided to retaliate. There should be, you should always think of the consequences, and, and they should think about what is this going to look like if we take all the sand away from here instead of having uh, big rolling sand dunes, now it'll be flat and, uh, and ugly, and, uh, and we make a lot of money, but is it the right way to do it? And it's not. And so you know, you've got to fight for what you believe in. The Manly Sand Mining Company wanted to mine the sand at Grand Mere. Chuck Nelson and other activists were against that, so they contacted government officials to make Sand Law 222. This law said a permit was needed to mine the sand. 
The company tried to get a permit, but Nelson and the others raised money for lawyers and stopped them from getting the permit. The company tried many times, but each time they were stopped. A different company then bought the land from the Manly Sand Mining Company. This new company was willing to compromise. They composed a 64-page agreement that said they could mine in one certain area until they made back the money they spent to buy Grandmere. They then would leave and no one would be allowed to mine sand at Grandmere again. And, and the main guy, uh, Mr. O'Leary, uh, he said, uh, we have investigated the whole thing and you know what, he said, we agree with you. We shouldn't be mining that. The towering dunes, the spirited Lake Michigan, and the peaceful forests all make up a part of this wonderful state park. Becoming a state park in 1968 was good for Grandmere, but it was even more importantly designated a national natural landmark in 1976. This was a relief to those like Chuck Nelson who fought to save Grandmere because it meant that this special place will stay preserved till the end of time. To, uh, to realize, and so it is indeed a beautiful thing that nature has created in all of its complexities. And the more you study it, the more you get to, to appreciate it. And it's just like fine art or any kind of, of thing that you appreciate, uh, that, that the more you find out about it, uh, the more you like about it. If it, has, if it has good aspects, and nature has good aspects. So sort of stamp collecting as well. It's just like <laughs> choosing a boyfriend. The more you find out about him, the more you like him. If he's not good, then the more you find out about him, eh. If it's a good thing, and the sand dunes are a good thing, because it has beautiful complexities, and the way it formed was just great. And the more you learn about it, the more you'd appreciate it, just like a good boyfriend. Grand Mere is an absolutely gorgeous place. With the beaches and forests, as well as the lakes, and the dunes that stretch out in rolling hills, this beauty cannot be matched. Not only that, but it is a place that people have enjoyed for countless years and should continue to enjoy for countless more. People tried to take over the land once for something as simple as sand mining. This destruction would have led to a place no one could enjoy. Luckily for us and future generations, that was stopped. No longer will we ever have to worry about people trying to sand mine or do anything to destroy Grandmere due to the simple fact that it became a state park. The Grand Mere State Park is not only pretty, but a wonderful educational area where students can go to learn about different ecosystems and how every part of nature interacts with each other. It is also a great place to enjoy the beach, hang out with friends, go on a hike, do yoga, or anything you wish. All in all, Grand Mere is a grand place for everyone.